Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on support vector machines of this machine learning course. In this section we use the mathematical formulation of the support vector machine model to determine a cost function. We have the equation for the boundary 0 equals the parameter vector w transpose times the input variable vector x plus b. Further, we have the two margin boundary equations. The plus margin boundary plus 1 equals the parameter vector w transpose times x plus b and the minus margin boundary equation minus 1 equals the parameter vector w transpose times x plus b. We need a cost function which maximizes the margin's width to find a separating boundary with a clear separation as seen in the previous section. This means data points of different classes are as far as possible away from the separating boundary. The cost function is derived in three steps. First, we will prove that the parameter vector w is perpendicular to the separating boundary. Let's choose two arbitrary points of the boundary. The corresponding vectors are denoted by g1 and g2. The difference vector g2 minus g1 is then a vector on the boundary. So if the parameter vector w is perpendicular to the boundary, the dot product of the vector w and the difference vector g2 minus g1 is zero. Because the data points g1 and g2 are on the boundary, they hold the equation for the boundary. So when we substitute g1 into this equation, we have the parameter vector w transpose times the vector of the data point g1 plus b equals 0. Similarly with g2 we have the vector w transpose times the vector g2 plus b is 0. Now when we calculate the difference of these two equations, the b parameter cancels out. Further, we can multiply out the vector w. This gives the vector w transpose times the difference vector of g2 minus g1 is equal to 0. So this means the vector w is perpendicular to the separating boundary. In the second step, we show that the length of the parameter vector w needs to be small in order to maximize the margin width. The margin width is denoted by d. Maximizing it allows to find the best separation with the largest distances of the data points to the separating boundary. To prove that this corresponds to a small length of the parameter vector w, we consider data points on the margin boundary. There has to be at least a single data point on each margin boundary. Otherwise, the margin, which is the space around the separating boundary without data, could be larger. The vectors corresponding to these data points on the margin boundaries are the support vectors. These vectors support to determine the model by limiting the margin width. They give the algorithm its name support vector machine. First, consider the data point vector x1 from the origin to the data point x1. It follows from the equation of the plus margin boundary that the parameter vector w transpose times the vector x1 plus b equals plus 1. Similarly, 
for a data point vector x2 on the minus margin boundary we have the parameter vector w transpose times the vector x2 plus b is equal to minus 1. Now when we calculate the difference of these two equations, the b parameter cancels out. However, on the right side, 1 minus minus 1 gives 2. Further, we can multiply out the vector w. So we have the parameter vector w transpose times the difference of the vectors x1 and x2 is equal to 2. Dividing this result by the length of the vector w gives at first the vector w transpose over the length of the vector w, which is a unit vector and that is perpendicular to the boundary as shown in the first step. This unit vector is multiplied with the difference of the vectors of x1 and x2. In total, this dot product with the unit vector gives the projection of the difference vectors x1 and x2 along the direction of the vector w. As shown on the sketch on the left side, this is the margins width d. On the right side of our expression, we have 2 over the length of vector w. So we have an inverse relation between the margin's width and the length of the vector w. This means small values for the length of the parameter vector w give large values for the margin width d. Finally, in the third step, we just need to formulate our cost function and corresponding constraints. In order to maximize the width of the margin, we need to minimize the length of the vector w. For convenience, we use the square of the vector's length and a factor one half. This gives our cost function. So minimizing this cost function maximizes the margin width. However, without any constraints, this would give a vanishing vector length and thus an infinite large margin. The constraints are that the margin needs to be free of data points inside. Reconsidering our pseudo model for data point given by the vector xi gives the parameter vector w transpose times the data points vector xi plus b. Let's consider xi to be in class b, the positive class, with y is equal to plus 1. The condition that this data point is outside the margin means that the vector w transpose times the vector xi plus b is greater than or equal to 1. If it is equal to 1, the inequality gives the plus margin boundary equation. Now let's consider a data point xi of class A, the negative class, with y is equal to minus 1. Our expression, the vector w transpose, times the vector xi plus b becomes negative and needs to be smaller than minus 1 to ensure a margin without data points. If our expression is multiplied by the sign of the class, we can formulate both cases for class A and B in one inequality where the expression is greater than or equal to 1. Because our encoding of the target variable was plus 1 and minus 1, we can use our target variable value to include this sign. So the constraints are the data point's target value yi times the parameter vector w transpose times the data point's vector xi plus b 
is greater than or equal to 1. This is our final optimization problem. The cost function h is equal to 1 half times the parameter vector w squared. This maximizes the margin width. The constraints, one for each data point, restrict the margin so that it stays free of data points. Solving this constrained optimization determines the parameters and therefore the boundary. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. So thanks again and see you in the next section.